Today I'll teach you how to use some canvas tricks to make working with coordinates easier. We'll learn to generate a grid of any size and draw polygons over it. We'll also explore the missing square illusion along the way. Now pay close attention not to miss anything. Get it? Because then oh no, no no no. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. I have Visual Studio Code open in an empty folder. And let's create our index.html file and begin with the doc type html open and closing tags and then the head section and in it the title missing square and in the body let's just leave it like this for now and check to see if this file opens properly and it does i'm using google chrome and you can see it opens because the tab here shows the correct title. Now we're going to add canvas to the body. And by default, this looks like nothing. But if you open the developer tools in the elements section, you can see that it is there. It is on the screen. It's just transparent. So I'm going to give it a black background color. And now we can see it there appearing. And I'm also going to give it an ID, my canvas, because I want to access it in JavaScript where we are going to draw some things. We do that here at the end of the body in a script tag. And I want to start with drawing a grid. So this time I want the size of the canvas to match the properties of the grid. Like for example, if it's going to have five rows, 10 columns, and a cell size of 50 pixels, I want to be able to tell to the canvas 2D drawing context, this CTX, that draw a grid on the CTX with the rows, columns, and cell size. So five times 50 is going to be 250 pixels in height and 10 times 50 is going to be 500 pixels in width. Let's begin to implement that draw grid function to set those proper sizes. So canvas width is columns times the cell size and height is rows times the cell size. If we save and refresh, it seems to look okay. Let's try flipping these values, maybe 5 and 10. And now the canvas is vertical like this. And it works for any other values like, I don't know, 11, 13, something like that. And now to draw the grid over this with that given cell size, I'm going to do a trick and set the canvas scale to be that of the cell size on X and cell size on Y. And that means that we can work with coordinates that are simple digits like one, two, three, four, but they actually scale according to these cell sizes. Like it actually becomes 50, 100, 150, and 200. And we don't have to do that math in our head. We just see it appearing there and it makes it easier to calculate. You'll see. So I can loop now for Y vertically through the number of rows like this. And same with the X horizontally through the number of columns. And now I want to draw this grid with random colors. I think this explains it a little bit better. So I'm going to set the fill style to 
HSL where I randomize the hue, a random number between 0 and 360. And then the saturation 100% and the lightness 50% because I want strong colors to appear there. And now I can fill the rectangle at X and Y with one unit in width and one unit in height. Because these cell sizes have been applied to the scale here, it means that one is actually this cell size. So if I'm going to save and refresh, I get this. Every time you refresh, you get a different pattern. And if you change the cell size in the top to a smaller value, like 10, then it also modified the grid to be a smaller grid where each cell is just 10 pixels. But I liked these 50 times 50 and would like to draw the grid using lines instead. Now, for that, I'm going to have to settle on a color for those lines, and I'm just going to say this color can be a parameter, but I will set the default to be white. And then here, instead of this fill style, I'm going to set the stroke style is equal to this color, so white, basically. And now for the line width, if I'm going to set this one to be one, that's a problem because one now means 50, it means the cell size. So if I still want it to look like one, I'm going to set it one divided by the cell size. And this is going to mean stroke rect, just as we expect. So this seemed a little bit more complicated now, but it will make everything else easier. You'll see just now when we start to define some polygons. Like if I want to draw a triangle from 0, 0 to here, then this is 0, 3. And then if I want to go to 8, 3, then that's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 here, and then back to 0, 0. So these coordinates are very easy to somehow count without considering that cell size at all. You just look at the units. And that's how I'm going to define this poly one. Let's say zero, 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 three, and eight, three. And now to draw it, I'm going to need to implement a function, draw poly on the context, poly one, and let's give the color as a parameter. Maybe we want to make it red. And somewhere below here, I'm going to implement this draw poly function on the CTX with the given poly and the given color. I'm going to begin the path. And then for all eyes from zero to the poly length, I'm going to align to poly of i. And here I'm using the spread operator so that this array of two values actually becomes two values because line two expects two parameters there. And now fill style to that color and fill. I'm not using strokes because I want to avoid that issue from previously. And there is the triangle. Now, one thing that would be really helpful in this um, experiment is to be able to draw this triangle at any left and top offset. Like if I want this tip to be somewhere here, I could specify that I wanted three from the left and four from the top. So I'm going to go here and say offset and line two, let's not use this anymore. Just say poly one and zero plus offset of zero and poly of i and one plus offset of one. And this offset could be defined as zero, zero to begin with. And now it still works as before. But if you go here where you're drawing the poly and specify some other kind of offset, like maybe five and two, then it's being drawn from five and two. 
Let's leave it here and draw another smaller triangle here with the height of two and a uh, base of five. So I'm just going to copy this one, say poly two and then two, two, five. Let's copy this one as well. Make it cyan poly two and this one I want it at the top. So zero, zero, or I can just remove this fourth parameter here. Save, refresh, and there it is. And now for poly tree, I'm going to draw a little bit different shape. You'll see. So let's copy these. And then zero, 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 two, 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 but then two, one going up. And then five, one going to the right. And five, zero to the top and then it closes there. So this one, I'm going to draw it below this second poly. So this one had the height of two. That means I just have to put two here and let's make it yellow. Save, refresh, and we have this. And the final piece is going to be this one right here. And that will be poly four. Starting at zero one this time, I'm not starting in that top left corner anymore. I'm giving it a gap to start here and draw something like that. So zero one and then down zero two, then five two, and now all the way up. So five zero two zero and then two one just below so that it connects and imagine working with all of these coordinates keeping in mind whatever the cell size is and multiplying them by 50 how difficult that would be to do all these calculations now i'm quite confident that this is going to work and if there is a mistake maybe there is i don't know but it's very unlikely for it to happen. And when it does happen, it's easy to fix as well. So this has to go even more down by one, I think. Let's see. Yeah, okay. And now I really want to check that I didn't make some kind of mistake, like maybe overlapping part of these pieces um, because they are supposed to fit like uh, Tetris blocks. So I'm going to go here before drawing the polys and I'm going to set the global alpha of 0 0.5. So now they are transparent and if they would overlap somehow, if I would have made a mistake, then I could see that. Like um, maybe here, if this would be three, then this square is where the yellow and green overlap, but I don't want that. I want everything to just touch each other perfectly like this. And now for the weird part, we're gonna draw these same polys at different locations somewhere here at the bottom. So let's try copying this one here. And I'm gonna use the same color, but I'm going to write it at zero and six. Yeah, I think this is about right. And now I can continue from here with the cyan. So this is going to be eight, six, the top left corner. Oh no, uh, eight, uh, nine, six plus three, because it has to move three down. Yeah, so, okay, I can make some mistakes, but um, anyway, the idea is that it's easy to figure out and to fix and Hopefully you get the point. And now for the yellow and the green, they will be one after another somehow. So first starting with the yellow here. So that means zero and nine. I think this is correct. Yes. And the final one, I can't start it here. Like at two X. 
because it's going to intersect that there. So let's try it. So two and nine. You see, it overlaps that square, but there are two gaps there. So if you move it there, instead of two here, we put a three, there's this gap appearing here. No overlaps, but there is this gap, this missing square there. Why? Why does it happen? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching and see you guys. Also, if you change maybe um, four different numbers here, you might have a visual explainer for why it happens. I don't know. Try it out.